Folks, this is going to be a rather long segment, um, and I'm going to try to uh, edit it down as much as possible, but um, I believe that uh, the time is well spent. Mississippi is opening up two museums uh, on Saturday. One of them is a history museum for Mississippi, and one is a civil rights museum in Mississippi. And the predator in chief, the womanizer in chief, the racist in chief is going to uh, be attending both openings and is going to speak. Now, there are three civil rights icons that are going to be honored at the Civil Rights Museum. And because Donald Trump is showing up, all three have indicated that uh, they will not attend. Now, uh, one of the uh, activists, in my opinion, uh, has uh, the right idea and one of the panelists, in my opinion, has the right idea, uh, i.e., that they should attend. But I'm going to let uh, uh, her own words uh, speak for her. Now, and again, this is going to be a bit long, so um, bear with me. In Jackson, Mississippi, two museums are opening in Mississippi, one of them uh, on the history of, the history of Mississippi than the other on the Civil Rights Museum. They do not hold back about uh, the seriousness of that, even how brutal and violent uh, Mississippi's history is. Donald Trump announced early this week that he will be attending uh, those ceremonies. Also, Ben Carson will be there with him as well. But some folks will not be there. Congressman John Lewis, as well as Congressman Benny Thompson of Mississippi, issued a statement saying they will not attend the Saturday's opening of the Mississippi Civil Rights Museum in Jackson. Many leaders are calling for Trump to stay away. In a statement, they say Trump's, quote, attendance and his hurtful policies are an insult to the people portrayed in this civil rights museum. My House Press Secretary, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, she fired back saying, we think it's unfortunate that these members of Congress wouldn't join the president in honoring the incredible sacrifice civil rights leaders made to right the injustices in our history. Trump hopes others will be joined in and recognizing that the movement was about removing barriers and unifying Americans of all backgrounds. With that, of course, you might remember on this show, NAACP President Derrick Johnson said Trump should not, should not attend that particular ceremony. But I want to play for Sanders exactly what she said. Go ahead. I think that would be uh, honestly very sad. I think this is something uh, that should bring the country together uh, to celebrate the opening of this museum and highlighting uh, civil rights movement and the progress that we've made. And I would hope that those individuals would join in that celebration instead of protesting it. This bitch got the nerve to talk about the progress that we've made when her fucking boss uh, turned around, has gutted the Civil Rights Division of the Department of Justice, calls uh, Ku Klux Klan and neo-Nazis uh, good people. Um, this guy calls for the death penalty on uh, people of color uh, when they're innocent. Um, this guy is the antithesis of being a, a racially positive person. He is a racist. He is a white supremacist. He's got no business showing up at a civil rights museum. Now that other Mississippi museum, hey, fine, let him go do his thing there. But he needs not to show his face at a civil rights museum because if anything, he is against civil rights. Mm, CBC said they called it laughable that the White House was criticizing Congressman John Lewis and Benny Thompson for not attending the, the Civil Rights Museum opening. Really? And guess what? The museum honors, yes, wait for it, John Lewis and Benny Thompson and others. <laughs> All right. One of the folks who also has been speaking out on this is Angelou Ellis. She, of course, actress and activist. She joins us right now from Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, and uh, Angelou, you hit me up, hit me the other day. You've got some interesting thoughts in terms of uh, the focus around the opening of this museum. Uh, go right ahead. Hi, good morning. Good morning, Lauren. How are you? Great. 
Good, good. Um, the problem is not just uh, Donald Trump attending the museum. Uh, Donald Trump's attendance to the museum is a, is a symptom of, of the problem with the museum, the museum, the museum itself. When the, when the ground was broken on the museum, Ms. Lily Edwards, the widow of Medgar Evers, who was shot here in Mississippi in the, in the, in the duty of, of fighting for civil rights here, um, the widow, Ms. Evers, when she made her statement, she got on the podium, and when she was on the podium, she was surrounded by Confederate flags. They were everywhere. They were on the dais. They were on the steps leading up to where she was, where she was speaking. No one in the leadership of the state of Mississippi thought that that was shameful, thought that that was a bad idea. She was surrounded by Lonnie Musgrove, Haley Barber, and Phil Bryant, president and former governors of the state of Mississippi. On the watch of all of these men, or some of these men, these things, these particular things have happened. One is they have maintained that the Confederate flag will still be the state the official state flag of the state of Mississippi. The other thing that they have done is they have designated April as Confederate History Month. The other thing that they have done is instead of calling Martin Luther King Day, Martin Luther King Day, they call it Great American Day. And then what they have done is they have designated state holidays where people really, state workers, get the day off to, to honor Confederate generals and Confederate leaders. All of this has happened on the watch of some or all of these men. And in addition to that, these men, on the, on the, under the watch of Phil Ryan, who stood next to Ms. Evers, they have passed HB 1523, which is now today's law, which guarantees we guarantee that owners of businesses can reject and put out people if they come in there with their boyfriend or their girlfriend, and their boyfriend or their girlfriend happens to have the same genitals that they do. So these men have an atrocious history with civil rights. Right. They are some separate, they are neo-confederate. Uh, Angelou, hold tight, one, just hold tight one second. I gotta get this break in, I'm gonna come right back. All right, folks, welcome back. News One now. We're chatting with actress Angelou Ellis uh, about the opening of Mississippi Civil Rights Museum this weekend. And Angelou, for a lot of folks, there are, so, there are two museums that are opening this weekend. Mm -hmm. There's one on the, there's, there's one museum on the history of Mississippi there's a, there's a separate one that is specifically uh, on civil rights. Uh, and, and I've talked to some people where they say, well, what is this separate but equal? Uh, the argument that you're making is, 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 is the fact that you have been against the Confe that, that Confederate flag uh, that's a part of the state flag in Mississippi. And that's the argument that you're making. I got about, four, I got about uh, 45 seconds about, uh, before I go to my break. I'm going to continue this top of the hour, so go ahead. Yeah, well, the, the argument that the argument that I'm making is these men who are who have funded the, the, the museum is a state funded museum, right. but they are, are branding this museum as a state funded museum. And what I'm saying is these men also fund that that flag. You can't do both. You can't do both. You can do both, but we have to realize that when you do both, what is that saying? What is that? What are you telling the world? And of course, you have. Of course, you have a, uh, a brother there uh, who has removed that flag from his uh, courtroom, uh, and he actually took it to the Supreme Court, and they refused to rule on it. And so, um, and, and, and you've been trying to get people uh, to rally around removing that from the state flag uh, and simply not accepting it. So, Angelou, hold tight one second. I got to get this last break in. All right, folks, we're going to continue our conversation with actors and activists Angelou Ellis about the opening this weekend of two museums in Mississippi. Donald Trump will be there. Uh, he'll be speaking. Ben Carson, of course, Housing Secretary, will be there with him as well. Uh, and uh, Congressman John Lewis and Congressman Benny Thompson of Mississippi uh, say they will not be attending uh, this particular event as well. I got my panel here in D.C., Michael Brown, Democratic Strategist, former Vice Chair of the DNC Finance Committee, Tiffany Cross, Managing Editor, and Curator and Publisher of The Beat, Robert Patillo, Attorney and Host of CBS Radio Atlanta. Um, Arjuna, when you... We had you on the show, and when you had that, y'all had a rally here on on, on the U.S. Capitol lawn, and and you talked about being a child of Mississippi, being a native of the state, and and what it says to the next generation of Black children who have to grow up under that flag. 
It's psychologically damaging. Damaging. Head damage. It's all of that. I mean, these men who are opening this museum, who I call Confederates and neo Confederates and, and Confederate, uh, Confederate apology, apologists, I mean, they have never, not once, have they apologized for the Mississippi Statement of, con of Secession, which says very specifically, our position is thoroughly identified with slavery. In other words, the reason that we are seceding from the Union is because we need to uphold slavery. And it goes on to say that the reason that we have to do this is because only people of the black race can do this kind of work in hot Mississippi. That is the Mississippi Statement of Secession. And none of these men who are involved in the funding of this museum have apologized for have, have apologized for that position. I want to say this well, right quickly, and, I, and, I, and you can move on. But I have been on your show a couple of times, mm -hmm. and thank you for allowing to do that. I appreciate that because I think you have one of the most important news shows on television right now. What hurt my heart is that before I sat down on your show, proudly sat down on your show. I had to walk by a Confederate flag in order to get to you. Right. And what you're talking about is, and folks, who don't know, uh, we do this show in, uh, the in, we do the show uh, 400 North Capitol here in D.C. Uh, and in the lobby, uh, they have all of the flags of the states, as Mike said, except District of Columbia. And you're absolutely right. Uh, and, I, and same thing, Anjanou, I've walked past that uh, and pissed off having to look at it. You're absolutely right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Every day that you go on your show, you have a platform that you have, not just to black folks, but to this country. You have to walk by an iconogra iconography which says that your life is not worth your, your chattel. The worth of your life is, is human chattel. You are subhuman. You are subhuman. And this is, this, I just want to make this point. The reason why you have to do that every day it's not just because it's racist people in control of the leadership in Mississippi. It's because the United States government has turned a blind eye to the Confederacy since, since, its, since, since its inception. They went to war for it, but they didn't clamp it down. Because think about this. After World War II, the United States led a coalition with other countries to absolutely get rid of completely any Nazi iconography in Germany. It's illegal to this day to fly a Nazi flag in Germany. But we can fly, Confederate, they can fly Confederate flags all over the place. It can be the official flag of a state in this country. And it, nothing is said about it. You know why? Because this country hides behind the racist policies of the Confederacy to this day. Welcome to my panel here, and this, and this, and this is what, again, for people who don't you know, understand, I want, you to, I want you to stay right there as well. Um, you know, they're having this big ceremony. You have your civil rights museum. What well, folks don't know, even with all she talked about with, with, the, with the holidays and things like that, if you go to the U.S. Capitol right now, yeah. and if you had an opportunity to walk on the floor of the United States Senate, if they allowed you to go on the floor, and if you went over to the desk of the senior senator from the state of Mississippi, and if you sat down and you said, this is the desk of a senior senator from Mississippi, you are actually sitting at the very desk Jefferson Davis used, America's greatest traitor, the president of the Confederacy. In fact, the United States Congress passed a resolution saying for the rest of eternity, that desk will be the desk of the United States Senator from Mississippi. Well, I think the, the thing to remember is that the U.S. never actually saw the Confederacy as being an enemy. They saw them as being a rebel province. They saw them as bringing them back into the Union. They, they had a disagreement as opposed to having a war. That's why in the South it's called the War of Southern, of Northern Aggression. So uh, we have to not run from that history, but start telling our own story. One thing that we have in Atlanta that I appreciate. No, 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 no. not telling our own story telling the story, the story yeah. from our perspective. Because exactly. it's their story too. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, exactly. In Atlanta we have the uh, the National Civil Rights uh, Museum, but we also, down the street, around the corner, off Auburn, on Sweet Auburn District, we have the Apex Museum, which is the black-owned 
Civil Rights Museum that tells the story from a purely black perspective, tells the uh, tales of individuals who don't make the national news. They don't have all the big graphics and all the iconography, but what they do is have the true history. It's what, that's why it's important that even if they do open the Civil Rights Museum uh, in Mississippi, to also have these museums to tell our own story. That's what I'm saying. But the silver, so, so just so folks to know, there are two, two museum openings tomorrow. There's the Museum on the History of Mississippi, and there's one that is specifically on civil rights. Tiffany, go ahead. Well, I, I would never tell a civil rights icon, John Lewis, how he should proceed, but I do think what would be more powerful is if John Lewis, Benny Thompson, and Cedric Richmond showed up to, to the event and told Donald Trump to his face uh, and spoke to the audience there and went through the list of things that this president has done and said, and not only his rhetoric, but his policies that he's instituted that are currently disenfranchising communities of color all over the country. And he can't leave. He has to stay there and feel uncomfortable and show the, all the things about the good people being on both sides and show that they're eroding the Department of uh, Civil Rights at the DOJ. I think that's a more gangster move that more people can rally around and you can't even sit there on camera and listen to everything that you've done and get a firsthand testimony from black people being impacted by oh, I'll be I am 100% with her. Donald Trump's ass would be trapped there and he would have to sit there and listen without being able to get up and move without totally embarrassing himself. That would be a powerful, powerful statement and powerful images because we would cut would love to cut to his face as he is being eviscerated for his racist policies and attitudes. I with you, Michael, if it's me, um, uh, and you heard Angenou describe uh, when they had the groundbreaking and all the different flags there. Again, I know how gangster I am. I would, I would have, I would have 100 black sheets, and I would cover. If they had those flags on the pole, I'll put a black sheet over every single, no, I'm sorry, one of those flags, and if I was on stage while Trump was speaking, I'd probably have a shirt on or a jacket that says, uh, uh, Angela, what's the shirt that you've been wearing, uh, uh, take down, uh, what does it say about the flag? Um, I, um, I got a million of them, X to X, take it down, I got a, I got a whole lot of them. I right, I'm, I'll be wearing one of those. Michael, your comment, then I'll go to Angela, go ahead. Ms. Ellis, good morning, Michael Brown. Um, Hi. Um, what is it like down there related to the press about some of our leaders that are not going to attend this weekend? Are they getting support? Are people mad that they're not coming? How are people receiving that? I think, you know, I think there are people who, you know, who, who, who are very proud that this museum is happening, and, and as, they, as they should be. I mean, they're honoring, you know, they're honoring our, you know, our civil rights veterans. They're honoring the people who gave their lives for this country. And so they are disappointed that, that, that they are not coming. But the problem, the problem with that is, and, and you know, Donald Trump coming is symptomatic of the greater problem with the museum. But if you have to think about this, if you got Confederates who funded the museum, you can't get upset because the Confederates invite and we are not to sympathize it because they have the same values. So Donald Trump, in my mind, is a side check. But I want to, I want to say this quickly about like. It's Donald Trump being there and being embarrassed because he has to sit there and listen to all the stuff that he's done and these other people that the, gover the government of the state of Mississippi has done. Here's the thing. For the last several years, Phil Bryant, Ronnie Musgrove, Haley Barber, all of these men have been in conversation with Miss Evans and the civil rights, the families of the civil rights veterans, right? Everything that I listened that I've talked to you about, all these things that they've done, they have done since that has happened. So this idea of a dialogue and having a conversation with them, that clearly has not worked. Donald Trump went to the Smithsonian in, in D.C., right? He went to the Smithsonian, right? Is that true? Yep. Yes. Yep. yes, correct. Yes, he did. And I have no doubt that the curators, that one of the first places they took him was to Emmett Till's casket. I have no doubt. He went in that room, he saw Emmett Till's casket, he saw Mamie Till's anguish in her face, he heard her words, he heard our voices singing in anguish, that's because that's what you experience when you go in that room. He had that experience. Months later, he stood up in his power, her power, and said that neo-Nazis that neo were good people. So this idea of we're having a conversation with people, we're having a conversation with people who have shown time and time again that even in the face of their shame and condemnation, they refuse to change. 
and they will maintain power. Oh, I, I completely ag agree with you. Um, I, I think it's not necessarily half of a 70-year-old who has, you know. No. Right, but here's the thing. Has, he, has this man ever responded with shame to anything? No. No, see, I, 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 I think, I think that's not going to start. That's see, not going to start yet. See, that's, that's, that's my thing. I think for me, it's not a question of saying I'm going to go there and confront Trump. No, I'm going to go there and make a public demonstration knowing full well all the cameras are going to be there because I'm not doing it talking to him. Right. You're I'm doing it. Right. I'm talking to America and the world. Right. So, so to Anjanou's point, I'm going to go there and I'm going to make an attempt. Now, they try to arrest me as a member of Congress. That's fine. But I'm going to try to cover that flag up. Right. Because... I mean, it's like, it's like, no, as a black man, I'm not going to sit in the presence of that flag. And, and I will, and, and, there, and there will likely, it will lead to a confrontation or whatever, but that has to happen because as long as we politely sit in the presence of white supremacy, then somebody watching goes, well, I guess they say it's okay. Absolutely correct. Well, I think well, to, uh, to Tiffany's point that it, it is important, often boycott can be the weakest form of protest when people are just asked to not do something. I think the active part of leaders, people in the community, I think the black folks should pack it out and make sure that our voices are heard. Make sure that everyone there from Haley Barber to Donald Trump understands our perspective and that we don't approve of these things because silence is often consent. So if we are silent on the issue, we just simply do not attend, then they can also take the, the pictures that will go out will be uh, Donald Trump attends the Civil Rights Museum, everybody's happy and smiling, the flag is there, I get the black folks who are, uh, were okay with it because nobody was protesting, nobody was yelling. We gotta go there and make sure they hear our voice. Okay. And again, I, and, 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 go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. We're going to be out there on Saturday. We will be out there on Saturday. Ain't nobody going to be fighting. The only reason we're not going to be inside the building, the only reason we're not going to be inside the building is because we don't have it in the patient. But we're going to be out there. We're going to have Confederate flags with over our place over our mouths. We are going to be out there on Saturday, and we are going to make sure that the press sees up. Because what the thing, this is the thing. So do, so do this here. Ashley, do me a favor. Here's the deal. So, um... I, I was, look, I, folks trying to get me to come to Alabama for the event on uh, Sunday. I got to go to Houston to broadcast my show on Monday. Uh, make sure y'all have y'all ca cameras there and just send me the video. Uh, s send me the video uh, so we can make sure we have it, all, have it on Monday as well. Anjanou, hold on one second. Congressman Benny Thompson, uh, we got him on the phone line right now. Congressman, we're talking about uh, the opening of the, the museums this weekend, uh, and you've announced along with Congressman John Lewis. Uh, that you're not going to be there. We will talk about this here. Um, why not? Why not attend? And let's say, Ashley uh, is making a point that uh, that we should not be uh, silent about that Confederate flag flying. Why not attend? And let's say while Trump is speaking, uh, turn your back or wear one of those shirts that get rid of that state flag. I'm just curious. Well, I think uh, a number of people have their own way of showing their disapproval. Uh, that's one way. Another way is to say, I don't want to be in the same room with Donald Trump. Uh, we don't appreciate his policies, and we think it speaks volumes uh, when a John Lewis uh, decide to do just that. And so, however people uh, plan to show their disapproval, uh, we support it. So I don't think there's one strategy. I think the ultimate perspective is we all disagree. Uh, uh, with the Donald Trump policies, as well as his presence uh, at the opening of the museum. So uh, I'm not knocking anything, but I think uh, at some point people have to make a statement, and we chose to make our statement that way. I uh, you know you got a question uh, for a couple. Now, I, I, I disagree with him, and I, as I stated earlier, I go along with the uh, woman on the panel. By not showing up, and not creating any type of a brouhaha or anything else, you are basically uh, uh, giving cover to everything being uh, all hunky-dory as far as uh, the museum and everything going on inside the museum is concerned. You got to open your mouth, okay? A squeaky wheel gets the oil, all right? But if a wheel ain't squeaking, ain't nothing happening. So you need to get up in there and squeak. 
Congressman Thompson, first of all, I just want to say thank you for your service. I think that I think there's a there's an unfortunate perception about, you know, activism in Mississippi. And the reason why it's the reason why this perception is maintained is because on a larger on these issues, people are not interested in Mississippi because they've given up on Mississippi. They think Mississippi is going to be Mississippi. But what folks need to know is that we are down here and we are pushing and we are fighting. We are pulling down Confederate flags physically and in every other way. So and there are mayors all over the state of Mississippi who have brought down these flags. And we also want to know, let people know that this is not just about a flag. It is about a strategy. It is about policy. It is about law instituted by Confederates and real Confederates in 2017. So the other thing about it is people need to know that this is the thing, is that it's not just a problem with Donald Trump. Donald Trump is a symptom of the problem. Mr. Thompson, don't you agree? I mean, the thing about it is, I mean, how do you feel about Mr. Bryant, Mr. Barber, and the other people who are involved in the funding of this museum who have the positions that they have? Congressman Thompson, go right ahead. You know, I appreciate your participation. A lot of us have spent our entire life in the state of Mississippi trying to make it a better place. We've sued legislatures. We've sued courts. We've sued counties. We've sued cities to make Mississippi a better place. All those strategies make sense. But at some point, the collective strategy is we have to oppose any effort to deny African Americans their rightful place. So whatever protest method we go for, we do it. I was a county commissioner 25 years ago, and I sued the state of Mississippi to change the flag back then. So when people come now to try to do it, I welcome it, but it's not the first effort. Hey, Congressman, I've got to go to a break here. If you can make it possible. Since you're not going, see if you can transfer your invitation to Ingenue on the inside. If you can do that, I'm just saying, I've got to go to a break. But if you can, let's see if we can make that happen, okay? I'll do my best, bro. All right, that's right on time. Hopefully he can transfer that invitation so she can get up in the mix. But, yeah, I recognize that this video has gone pretty long, but I just believe that the information that you have received from the Roland Martin News 1 Now show is of vital importance.